welcome. It's Edgar Snowden here. We're doing our prisms today and our tides and cascades and trailblazers and abacus. It's all LIBOR rated. It's ISDA fixated. We've had some more requests for dangling John the Chad. Well, I got to say that today he's not here. Had to, his chain fell apart. He had to put it back together. And he had some low-hanging fruit he had to take care of, and he was unhung, as chads often get unhung. But never mind, we'll have him again, perhaps to talk about Woodstock and Joe Cocker. With a little help from my friends. You take a deep breath. You talk about what you can. There are few antidotes to extinction 2112. But in our herbal administration, the APA won't be torturing nobody no more. They voted against participating in black sites in Abu Ghraib and Guantanamo. Yay for the APA. I'm taking a deep breath with those folks. Oh. And then there's Donnie Trump. Donnie Trump brings up the unexpected, the most unexpected candidate debate on blood. Menzies, how often have you heard a, a, a presidential campaign talk about male menopause. I think Donnie Trump-tastic is going through male menopause. Look at that hair. I wish I had hair like that. Oh, well, you have what you have. You got what you need. I think I got what I need. The 50th Woodstock is coming up, and Grace Slick on her surrealistic pillow post-menopausal pillow. But never mind, I'm there too. I'm there too, my PSA. My PSA is way through the roof, through the glass ceiling. But never mind, I don't even want to talk about that. Ain't that kind of program. We don't talking about no prostrates. Namaste. Gate, gate, para gate, para sam gate, bodhi swaha. What if you could be grateful? What if you could be grateful, comadres and copadres? Grateful that you got what you need. I'm lucky, I got what I need. Living up here on Erie Street, it's a little eerie. That's all I can say, it's a little eerie. Especially high up, looking out in that building that's self-contained, got its own air conditioning. That's why I got a cold. I'm not used to being air conditioned in the summer. But then, never mind. Maybe it's the stress. Maybe it's a stress test to be recertified, to live where you live, to be on the David Project, the Zionist, Zombie Zumba, Operation Cast Lead, and Dershvitz, self-loathing, self-immolating Jeffrey Epstein Jews. But then again, we're talking about male menopause again. And that little red Corvette the Dershvitz has. I'm taking a deep breath. And wondering, thinking, thinking about having run into Joel Ziff again. I ran into him again. I told you about him. He's that guy. I knew him. He's a therapist. A therapist. You wouldn't think it would happen with a therapist. But 20 years ago, he was a friend of mine. I'd been friends with him for about four or five years. I'd been to his wedding. 
He invited me to his wedding, and so I invited him to my wedding, which is long since come and gone. But never mind. He never responded. He dissed me, rejected me just like Barry Goldwater. Them people and Larry Cohen. Oh, oh, I can hardly believe that they didn't value me more than that, that they didn't want to work it out, that they didn't want to keep talking, keep trying to make it all well and good. Well, this time, <coughs> when I saw Joel Ziff, because I had the chance to talk with you all, my perfect audience, about it, I, I made eye contact with him. But his eyes were like up in the cloud somewhere, and he was kind of talking to himself or maybe on a cell phone sometimes. Have you ever noticed how you can't tell crazy people no more? People talking to themselves that could have a Bluetooth or a Blackberry or a smart crone. They could be cretins or retards like myself. Retard and retread. You take a deep breath. Oh. Well, this time I made contact, made eye contact with Joel Zift, except he didn't make eye contact with me, so it didn't really go anywhere, and I just kept going by again. One of these days, maybe I'm going to have the courage to stop and say to him, Joel, do you remember me? We were friends 20 years ago. You stood behind me at direct tire, and we both made believe we didn't know each other, but we do. We do. I know you. Maybe you, maybe you demented. Maybe you Alzheimeric, and you don't know me, because we old folk now. You look old. Joel Ziff with your whiskers and stuff. You don't look like that young and vital man you did 20 years ago. But I guess you might say the same of me. I hope you wouldn't. I hope you'd say that I was pretty buff for an old man. I'm taking a deep breath. I was at the bank. You know, the Citizens Bank right there in Central Square. And a little girl called Sunny. She, she, she engaged me, and we had a conversation. I told her to apply for Harvard, so I'd give her a recommendation. She told me. She told me I ought to have my teeth whitened. And I told her, you know, the truth is good, Sonny. The truth is good. But in you, if you have that interview with that Harvard person, like I did. I remember it well. I still remember it. I talked about Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Can you believe it? A thousand pages, Atlas Shrugged. Wow. And then The Fountainhead, another thousand pages, same book. It was the same book. I couldn't believe it. She didn't understand that she was writing the same book twice. Well, I take my inspiration from her, because after all, Alan Greenspan listened to her. And look where that got us all. That got us all Libor rated and is the fixated. And TPP, TPP is having a little bit of a hard time abroad. You may not be following it. You may be following the Trump-tastic debates, or you may be following dangling Chad wherever he is, out there hanging with the low-hanging fruit. Well-hung low-hanging fruit, I might add. But never mind, we ain't going to get into no blood diamond sutras, no Trump-tastic blood diamond sutras. Gate, gate, para gate, para samgate, bodhiswaha. It's a kind of netty, netty Neanderthal narcissism and Denisovan democracy 
a spiritual Florenzians fast and furious with 2020 hypo hindsight we will have seen that this will have been the time to cross back over the tipping point because we over the tipping point we done past the hairpin turn in the Holocene it's all going to hell it's going to be four degrees C global temperature higher than 1990 in 2050 or maybe 2060 and the tides are going to rise and did you know that Boston according to the United Nation is the fourth most important city to be threatened by the sea rising. Boston is built on tidal marshes, marshes that have been filled in. And if the tide, as James Hansen says it might be, 10 feet higher by Y22C, 10 feet higher, that would put 30% of Boston downtown underwater. It's a little like Indian Point. It's a black swan waiting to happen. And they're talking about seawalls for New York, but you can only build so many seawalls in New Orleans. And then, then they keep, keep undermining the, the wetlands and the waterways. And it's all going to hell. They build in seawalls while they dig in away the underpinnings of the seawalls. And it's all going to come down, just like Jericho and Joshua. And Moses raising his right hands, Roan the two Yah. Righteousness. Too much righteousness floating around. We got our Reichian armor and our Reikian auras and chakras. And we got our Feng Shui going and our dangling chads and their low hanging fruit and their gold chains and their Goldilocks gradients into the quilted multiverse. It's a gamma ray burst. Oh. The thing is with Joel Ziff is that it hurts me that someone who I would have liked to stay friends with didn't consider me important enough even to return his wedding invitation and say no. He didn't even say no. He said nothing. What a diss. But maybe I could tell it as a funny story. I'm still working on a funny story. I think it had helped me to stop and say something to Joel as if next time on the, on the Charles River embankment that I see him, because he lives near there. I, I ain't going to tell you where he lives, because there's a certain amount of publicized privacy. But he does live close to there on the Yeoman Street. But never mind. It's all encrypted. It's all encrypted and publicly keyed. And there are hacktivists and kayaktivists and parapentacrivists. You take a deep breath. It's iambic, your pentameters and pen chronometers, your poet tasters, laureate, in our herbal administration, because I'm running. Herbie, Herbie for precedent. You got to remember that, because you got to write it in. 
That's H-E-R-B-I-E-P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N dot com. Sign the petition, Herbie for President. That's what we need. You could be a pioneer donor if you like. But alas, probably ain't going to come down to me. So I go, I go for Jill Stein or Bernie Sanders or one of them folk. I, I defer to them. But us 36, we're seeing it. We're witnessing. We're chronicling the clean coal buba misa. The clean coal chronicles. It ain't gonna happen, no clean coal. And Coca-Cola is now starting a campaign, it said in the New York Times this morning, it said Coca-Cola is astroturfing it. The, the Global Energy Balance Network is now arguing that it ain't Coca-Cola and sugary soft drinks that give you diabetes type 2 and make you obesity prone and morbidly lapectomied in the laparoscopic surgery or tummy tucked or crow's feet or facelifted. None of that's going to help you if you fat. I mean, don't, fat is a feminist issue. But it's a, it's a male issue, too, because at this age, when you get old, all your big muscles, they go into your belly. You got a pouch. You got a bear belly. A bear belly. So you don't bear your belly, because it, it would be a little bit nauseating to see a bear belly of an old man. Ask me. Ask me. One of these days, one of these days on Edgar Snowden's anniversary, maybe we're going to be streaking through the BeLive studios. Think about it. Imagine it. Don't imagine it. Take a deep breath. You're a perfect audience. If you can follow the rules, Take a deep breath. Om. You join in. You lubricate the levels. It's a litmus test for lynching. Because people out there are still being lynched. And out there in Israel, East Jerusalem, I think it was. They burnt an 18-month-old baby to death. The colonialist settler terrorists burnt an 18-month-old baby. And just, just this weekend, his daddy died. His sister and his mama is still in critical condition. Kind of makes me feel ashamed to be a Jew. I got to say, self-loathing in Judaism. I got the Judar for it. It's a Zap Jap. That's Zaftig, American princess. Jewish American princess. That's who I'm looking for. Schwarze, please. Beshert Habibi, Falasha. I and I, I read. TPP, that's Tantric Practice Partnership. And I got me mine. And I'm pleased. I got to say, sometimes you just luck out. And you got to be grateful for the Banach. That's Gaelic for blessing. I learned that on thir last Thursday. My friend Tommy's, Tommy the Poet, Poet Taster Laureate of Cambridge. My friend Tommy, I'll read some of his poetry, I have. But probably all of you's old and don't remember. You don't remember my reading what I read on a previous show? 
Well, it's up on that website that I done gave you, herbieperlman.com. But never mind, you can check it out or not. You never know. You take your lumps. Because with 2020 hypo hindsight, us 36, the Lamadvovniks, we're witnessing and we're whistleblowing. With 2020 hypo hindsight, we're wit witnessing the 99% done deal holocide. We're right now in the Hansen, Hansen trans, transit transition trance. And it don't look like we'll get out. We're still talking about Donnie Trump and blood, blood bromances. Donnie and the blood and his blood bromance and his Viagra and his Vuvu laser, his obscene Vuvu laser, Donnie, Donnie. I remember when you was married to Marla Maples. I remember that article she wrote for the New Yorker about who you were. I couldn't believe that anybody could be so surface. But now, now you want to be president for America. I'm on your side. Trump-tastic. Trump-tastic. And then there's Jebic and Hillary the feminazi. Oh my God, they all the same. They all ISIS, and ISIS is us. Make no mistake about it. We are the 1%, the 1% heart of darkness. You can find it in yourself. You probably don't even got to look so hard. Can you tell me, can you tell yourself when you've been operating from that 1% darkness? Have you ever been depressed, bipolar, schizophrenic, disabled, irritable, on drugs of any kind of sort, opioids? Or have you been ankle braceleted? In our herbal administration, we're going to put ankle bracelets on the 1%, and penile pathismographs, just to make sure what turns them on. Money turns on the 1%. You don't need no penile plethysmograph to tell you that, but if you got one, it'll tell you. Just think about the deal that Warren Buffett is making. He'll have one of them on his penile plethysmograph. It'll tell us, it'll tell us that he's really turned on by this $30 billion deal buying a defense contractor. It's going to happen, I think, but maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be like TPP. Obama leaned, leaned hard for TPP. And now let's see what he does for Iran and Iraq and all them wars that he's out of but into. The perennial war, the war against all wars, the war of Indian Point and FERC and the NRC and they want to expand the fracking pipes so they can have a bigger blast radius closer to Indian Point and the spent fuel pools. I ain't making this stuff up. It's 47% stuff. It's 1% stuff. It's a Coke 1% master narrative official story. And us 36 are sad. We're sad that the people in power don't have their penile plethysmographs on. 
or never mind we won't go we won't even say we'll just leave the ankle bracelet for hillary that's all but never mind never mind if you getting hemorrhoids if you getting tmj if you constipated you've come to the right place because we're going to tell you on the down low what you can do about your menopausal constipation. It <laughs> comes with the territory. You know that elder hostile wisdom, that hostile elder wisdom, where all them killer cops keep killing people. Another couple this weekend. Ferguson, another, another black kid called Tyrone Blake got murdered by a policeman who let him bleed out. He bleeded out. We're all bleeding out as we speak. The body, Gaia, along its ley lines, we get into population peak. Peak population is going to be happening. <clears throat> within the next 20, 30 years. And my guess is it'll peak at about 9.9 .9 billion people before, before the time of the first great decimation. Take a deep breath. Oh, yeah, I had um, 